but can you give us maybe a 90 day gross total if you not just ebay but all the platforms including i know it's a little hard including furniture the whole nine yards <laughs> Welcome back to Commonwealth Flipper. Welcome to the Commonwealth Cabin. I've got a great show for you today. I'm taking a little bit of a break. Whenever I do that, I want to have a great interview. And I've got somebody I've, I've really enjoyed getting to know. He's a full-timer. And those are the people I want to interview. Those are the people's stories I want to tell because everybody's dream is to quit their job and, and sell things in a shed in their backyard. <laughs> That's my dream anyways. And so I really want to walk people down that path. I don't ever suggest people do it. And I like to interview people who are doing it, who've done it for longer than I have for sure, and see how they got to this point. And we've got Paul Philly Flipper, and I can't wait for you to hear his story. All right, y'all, here is Paul Philly Flipper. And I'm, I'm, I'm mind Frank. Can you, can you see my head? <laughs> <laughs> so I got to tell you, all when he walked in the door, he had to duck. I mean, he's literally up here. He had to duck. This is made for me and my family. It's not made for <laughs> that, people. That made, that made for giants from Chernobyl. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. And Turner, so I told him, I, we pulled up and I'm like, Turner, there's a giant at our house. <laughs> He's like, is he really a giant or is he just big? I was like, glad he's just really big. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> anyway, this is Paul Philly Flipper. Thanks for uh, coming down and, and agreeing to do an interview with us. We appreciate uh, it. It's, it's been a dream of mine since I was <laughs> since little, last week. <laughs> since I was a little young lad, I wanted to be in, in the cabin. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, so I'm going to ask you just a couple background questions here, and then I'm going to get into reselling a little bit. But I'm I'm a history major, so I got to have the context. Yeah, I have to have the context because it always intrigues me. People that are resellers, I firmly believe that most of us have the same personality traits. Just uh -huh. it, the ones that are successful because you have to have some self-discipline, you have to have certain things. And there's also some traits about not working for somebody else, I really believe that some of us don't have, so or some of us do have. Yeah. And I, and I just wanna start with that. So you, if you can tell, he's got a little bit of an accent there. I, I tell people it, it comes out when I drink more, but, but <laughs> when I'm sober, you can barely you can barely tell. I tell I'm from Southern California, so I tell people I have a Southern accent. So he has an Eastern accent, but yes. but we're not talking Eastern U.S. here. Where are you from? I was born in Soviet Union, technically, yep. but I tell everyone from I'm from Ukraine. Ukraine, yes. And so I'm a hist I'm an AP history teacher, y'all. So I knew what he meant by you know Soviet Union, Ukraine. Ukraine becomes Ukraine 1991. Mm -hmm. after the fall of Soviet Union. You were born... 90. In 90. Yeah. Boy. Just man. Right, right before. You were really born in the Soviet Union. Yeah. Amazing. How many people in their 30s can say that? You yeah. have a Russian spy in your cabin. <laughs> and have a, 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 oh, jeez. <laughs> tell somebody this. <laughs> I love it. And your family came over at a young age. So you've been here a while. When did you come over? Uh, we came over in 98. Okay. So I've been here for 20... Wow. 23 years. <laughs> okay. That's All right. Okay. And so I just started asking him a few questions just to, to get me on the right track to get, I, I met him at the reseller rally. And so I just was very intrigued by how somebody, just like Pete Craigslist Hunter, I was intrigued by his story as well. And I just wanted to know a little bit more about his family coming over. So I guess the question I want to start with here before we start talking about the actual reselling side of it mm -hmm. is... What made you, what led you to reselling? What were you doing beforehand? What Did you go to college? Well, I guess we'll start with that question. Technically, yeah. I went to college, went to community college. I never intended on getting a degree. I never wanted to work for anybody. Uh, I, the last year <laughs> in college, I wanted just to be on my parents' medical insurance because that, that was under Obama. So you said you never wanted to work for somebody. So you knew from the get-go, you just didn't want to... Knew from like high school age. Uh -huh. Like all the all the jobs that were feeding me, mm -hmm. like electrician, accountant, it just all <laughs> seemed way too structured. I was okay, like, so I was is like, that what it is? Is it you didn't, is it you don't like to take orders or you don't like to be on a schedule or both? Or... I, I think a little bit of both. I just didn't mm -hmm. want to say, okay, I'm going to wake up at nine... I go to work at nine, come home at five, mm -hmm. wake up next morning, repeat, 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 repeat. Right. Do that for 60 years. And that, was, that, wasn't, that's not, that wasn't part of my, <laughs> my plan. And you're clearly not afraid of hard work because I see what you do all the time. So it's not about the hard work. No. It's about doing it on your time when you want to do it. And, and, and in that case, it doesn't seem like, like work. So how about after that? What was your first job, your real job? 
Okay, so after college, my first real job is I had a landscaping business. So your Again. first job was your own job. <laughs> so you knew from the get go. I, I cut my like neighbor's lawns uh -huh. and I was like, wow, they're going to pay me 30, 40 <laughs> bucks for 30 minutes of work. I love it. I, I can I can do this. I can multiply this by whatever. So uh, there you go. My, my, my first job was doing that and uh, do that for three years. Awesome. And then what, what, what came next? So next, I kind of fell back and work for somebody <laughs> you fell back which i just said i didn't want to do uh -huh. but, but uh i must have offered you some money i had a great career opportunity to work for a fortune 500 company mm -hmm. to be a manager there so i took it and i worked there for three years stuff happened <laughs> uh, pretty much did you enjoy it i enjoyed the work uh -huh. i enjoyed the people it was a great great environment you don't have to bring your dogs to work like, really what kind of job is to bring your dogs to work <laughs> that that was a great part of it my but, dog <laughs> is always in here it's sometimes it's the cats that i have a problem with <laughs> <laughs> but then after three years pretty much what i feared of when i wanted to work for somebody happened to me was they came to me and were like hey you did great for these three years but the numbers aren't adding up and if you want to stay here you gotta take a pay cut ah okay yeah i see Okay, now that kind of gets me thinking along some historical lines, but I'm going to spare the audience. Maybe I'll bring it up later. So, all right, we're going to ask you a few more questions. You hang around and talk about the reselling part of it here? No, I got to go. <laughs> all, right. Yeah. all right, Paul, now that we have some context here, I want to know what led you to reselling. What happened? Did something happen? Well, obviously, you, you, you lost your job, Yeah. But, but still, what led you to reselling? So, after I lost my job, I opened another company. I started doing a moving business. But while doing this, I guess it's just like the Slavic nature in us is that we don't like to just get money coming from one avenue. And I learned it from my dad, from my uncles. They always were hustling and doing scrap or whatever from the side. And I got to stop you for a second because you opened the door to history. So now I can't help. <laughs> it, okay? okay. So obviously the Ukrainian people, there's, well, I don't want to get too into detail, but the Slavic... Eastern Slav and then the, the Rus and the, the Northern uh, Scandinavian influence and all this stuff in, 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 uh, uh, in went, the Ukraine. You deep, deep into history. The oh, Rus. well, dude, I could talk you forever. The Rus out, I'll right? get, matter of fact, I'll wow. tie in some Vladimir in a second. But <laughs> look, you've got something that I think is interesting and it's security. So a lot of people get a job and do what you just described as not wanting to do mm -hmm. for security. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't lose your insurance, whatever. You're actually telling the story in reverse. Your security is coming by taking care of yourself and having multiple streams of income. Yeah. So your security is the flip side of the story that I got from so many people. You don't want to get rid of your pension. You don't want to get rid of your insurance. And you're telling a different story where your security means you're, you're multifaceted and you have multiple ways of, of making incomes and side hustles. So Correct. I think that's intriguing. Yeah. So, all right, go ahead. Tell the rest of your story. So, uh, while owning the movie business, I used to listen to uh, Gary Vee all the time. <laughs> Gary Vee is close to my heart because he's from Belarus as well. We also. can't play Gary Vee. He cusses way too much uh. for, the, for the Commonwealth <laughs> Flipper channel, but yeah. I got you. <laughs> but Belarus is part of, also part of the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. so we had like that kind of same right. hustle mentality. Mm -hmm. And one summer, he he like encouraged his viewers to go to a yard sale and make an extra $5,000 during the summer. Well, that I've was, seen those videos. And that was summer of 2019, and I was like... I'm I'm already in these neighborhoods moving houses. I drive past the arts all the time. I might as stop. well stop by and see what I can do. And that's pretty much how I got into it. Yeah. And you just pick one. What was the, do you remember the first thing or one of the first things that you just really clicked? Because you said something earlier that really interested me. You said when you uh, mowed that first lawn, mm -hmm. you said, I'm going to multiply this out. And you could see in your mind, I'm going to make this money. Yeah. So what was that item that you just like, I just got to do this X times a day and I can make a living? It's actually... It was a sealed jigsaw puzzle. Okay. And the reason why I picked that up is because after I heard Gary V talking about it, mm -hmm. I went home and I YouTube yard sale reselling, like whatever, eBay on. And <laughs> Who'd Lonnie, you find? Lonnie. Lonnie. Lonnie was the first <laughs> one. Flip. So, Shed Flips. This shed was, Flips, yeah. And this was summer of 2019. This mm -hmm. was two and something years ago. Mm -hmm. And he picked up a sealed puzzle and he's like, this thing sells for 25, 30 bucks. And I, and I had no clue, obviously. <laughs> sure, sure. And then the next sale I go to, there's like four sealed puzzles. Mm -hmm. and there was, were ones at all the sales you just didn't see them before because you yeah, weren't thinking about them exactly. i'm telling i tell people that all the time you find yeah. what you're looking for 
and she wanted like a dollar a piece, and I was like, okay, I'm spending four dollars, mm -hmm. selling for twenty five mm -hmm. each. That's four into a hundred. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't break a sweat. <laughs> so, yeah. I didn't have to move any furniture. No. <laughs> so I didn't lift any couches or anything. It. Yeah. I love it. All right, I love it. So jigsaw puzzles. My very first sale was actually a Nixon Kennedy debate tape sealed cassette tape oh. i stole it from the social studies department at my school you stole uh, in it? all honesty it was in the uh, discard pile all right let's get down to the things that most people look at this y'all look he's got cincinnati picker on there man you get the big dogs uh, over there. I, I get a couple small channels here <laughs> he, he could use my publicity that's, that's why he's coming. <laughs> yeah that's right he's coming for you right there that's by the way philly flipper y'all Let's get him to 2,500 by the time that show rolls on. And he got in, he had a live channel too, Philly Flipper Live. Correct. All right, good. Yeah, a little yeah. shameless plug. You see yeah, how he did that? Appreciate it. He's that. got this good stuff. <laughs> Let's get down to the nitty gritty here. How long have you been first reselling and then how long have you been full time? Well, I, they might be the same answer. Okay, so reselling was, I guess, when I, the, the puzzles I bought was June 2019. June so, 2019. So that's two, a little over two years, two and a half years okay. now. Then I went full time April of 2021. So okay. I've, I haven't been full time for a couple of months now, six months. I don't know. Okay. I don't know how math works. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> the history teacher. Yeah. All right. So what are you? What are your absolute favorite things so far about it? Just the multiplier effect. You can buy something for a dollar. And potentially sell it for a hundred. So, do you have is the thrill for you in the find or the sale? The sale, that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, man. I think. I, the, the, I, and I, most people, it's the find. It's the sale for me. Yeah, it's the sale. You can find it, and it will sit in your shelf for six months. <laughs> but what I it love moves. it. That's the mentality. To me, yeah. that is the mentality of a successful full time eBay reseller. At least the kind of way we do it. You know, I mean, there's all kinds of different ways to do it, but the way we yeah, do it, we don't collect decorations for, for our cabinet. <laughs> That's right. right. We, we, these we, we, things are for sale. We want these things to move. <laughs> <laughs> there's a link in the store below. Uh, look at that. Shame, <laughs> shameless plug. Hey, all right, great. Now, how many listings do you currently have up? Oh boy. Uh, eBay. My Listen to this, y'all. I know the answer to this question. <laughs> my biggest platform is eBay, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, I'm at 5,100 right now. 5,100. You know how many I have? I have 800. And if it wasn't for Blue Ridge Mama, I'd probably have six. <laughs> I, I That's just amazing. Killing. That is amazing. Well, that could also mean that you you have good items that just keep selling. Well, that's and part I have of it. Four thousand that just that's, sit there. For well, years. maybe in prices. <laughs> I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. Well, that goes to so we're we're selling. You know, we sell quite a few a day, but yeah. I've seen your numbers too. So, what are you selling in a typical? I don't know if you want to do day or week. Typical day, if everything is humming and how it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. if eBay is not messed up or whatever. I get about 15 to 20 sales a day. A day, okay. Yeah. And you probably have higher numbers than me because you don't put, you know, sell, you know, replacement mousetrap balls. <laughs> it's, it's Are you? you would believe me. <laughs> so, were, did you struggle at the beginning to to make a living doing this, or you know, did you slowly ease into it? Did you have a little money backed up, you know, to get you where you're at right now? Well, in, in the beginning, I, I was I was part time. Mm -hmm. So my so main source working. was the moving company. Then whatever I sold was just like extra money okay. for me. There you go. Uh, the, what I struggled with is when I went full time, I was putting the same hours as I was doing part time in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I had I did not really f the mentality have my mentality to do it, and then I was having the same sales I was having, and I was like, <laughs> no "Wait, <surprise. laughs> I can't really survive on this if there I just keep go. doing it." All right, so how many hours do you think you put in in a week? Listen to this, y'all. I don't know, clue. <laughs> I see you. I see you um, doing live shows at the crack yeah, of dawn see, in the middle of the night. So I know you're working. That, that's the thing is like, how many hours do I actually work there? Is not right. The question, yeah, but, that's uh, true. I got you. It's different, right? It's not yeah. like punching a clock. Yeah. Yeah. I got there's you. times where I'm messing around and watching like Commonwealth Picker on YouTube. And, <laughs> and does, you know you can't get any work done. That does absolutely no good for me. <laughs> but uh, I get to the warehouse around <laughs> nine to ten in the morning. Mm hmm. I, I pack orders during that time and then and then I leave around two in the morning. Look at that. <laughs> mm. How many listings? Like, do you have goals? Do you have short term goals, yes. like daily or weekly? Yeah, r right now my goal is for the month of October is four fifty dollars a day, every single day okay. on listings, and then in November it's going to go to five hundred, and December is going to go to okay. five fifty. That leads me to another question uh, that people who don't do eBay aren't really familiar with. But could you give some people some insight maybe into your margins, your profit margins? Typical. I know it changes all the time. I tell people that if I'm not making 50% 
on a daily basis. I'm disappointed. Some days maybe yeah. not, but some days a little better. What about you? I, I actually never counted it. And, and it's, it's going to be hard for me to count because I don't just yard sale. I don't just estate sale. I don't mm -hmm. just thrift store. I also buy storage units. Right. And when you buy storage mm -hmm. units, it's almost impossible to count your profit margin. That's true. That's you, very true. Yeah. You, and, get a, you get a storage unit for 50 bucks and it has 5,000 items in there. Are you, what are you doing with your excess? Because you obviously have excess when you do that. <laughs> You don't want to answer this question? Uh, access, <laughs> you have a trash can out back, you just I, burn it? <laughs> we, the, my warehouse where I have, uh -huh. we have a public dumpster. Okay. And I have a special deal because I guess mm -hmm. I have one of the bigger mm -hmm. warehouses in my life. So lot. you don't do, you don't like flea market or have yard sales in the warehouse every every so often? It's just not worth your time. My, my If my warehouse was open to the public, mm -hmm. like you can't get from my warehouse outside. Okay. Like, you have to go down like and, five okay. corridors gotcha. to get to me. Gotcha. I would do warehouse sale down. Okay. I don't want to do estate sales because estate sales are usually Saturdays and Sundays, right. and that's when I go to yard sales. Right. I don't want to mm -hmm. miss out on that source of opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, I gotcha. pretty much anything that's like worth estate selling, I just take the goodwill okay. and just get rid of it there. Gotcha. How yeah. about local flips, furniture, and stuff? Oh, I do that all the time. Okay. <laughs> and, and what what kind of percentage of your business is that? Do you think? Local? Uh huh. You'd be, people would be surprised. Yeah. It's probably like around thirty. To 40%. You you came out here. Do you, can you do you see why I can't do local flips? Yeah, I could definitely. See. <laughs> First of all, no one's gonna see you. <laughs> there's there's no lights anywhere in like a five mile radius. So we live county. out here in the middle of nowhere. I have to. Tell yeah, you. and like. <laughs> and I, you haven't seen nothing yet. You ought to see when you leave this place where you're going. Yeah. You will be. Mm, I don't even know like where you would do a local meetup here. Like I, 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 <laughs> the sheriff station. It's about uh, six miles down the road. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I would not if I had to drive six miles for a local meetup. I would, I would yeah, not. Do I, it, I but... do. I do very, very few um, local um, Facebook marketplace deals, and I only really do them with items that people in rural communities would would want. Oh, uh, okay. So. But, you know, but, like I got a wooden still ladder. Small, small items, right? Or you, no, not, I'll not do. Like I have a giant. I have a ten foot ladder out there okay. that I just yeah. sold at sixty dollars. I bought it for five and sold it for sixty, right? Yeah, but it's yeah. for it's a gigantic wooden ladder that somebody's going to use in some you know hay ride or stuff or picking you know yeah. who knows what off of what. But uh, it doesn't happen very much around here. But I think that's a huge plus when you're doing that. Of course, places that have more people also have higher rents and a higher cost of living. We're out here. It's, there's yeah. no cost of living. So I'll take the, the trade-off for sure. And that's one of the things with storage units is that you get a lot of big stuff. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of furniture. You get a lot of large electronics. So if, if I didn't do local meetups, I would be throwing away a lot of money that, that mm -hmm. I was making up that. No doubt. So and a lot of local. the quickest turnaround rate for me is furniture. Yeah. I put a couch up, it sells in two days, really? almost all the time. Wow. Yeah. Cool. That's good. That's yeah. good to know. I'm glad because I, I do have a lot of uh, full timers that do that. A certain portion of their income really comes from that local stuff. Yeah. All right. And you've kind of already answered the other question. Where do you source from? People are always curious about that. But I just want to look into the future a little bit and ask you two more questions. Paul, thanks for joining us. Last two questions and then Turner's going to come down and give you a little bit of merch. Is that all right? I, I think I have some big enough stuff can here. I, can I resell that or have to keep yeah. it? <laughs> a true reseller. I love it. I'll have to sign it if you're going to resell. you see what elements are going for these days? <laughs> no kidding. All right. Here's the question I got and the criticism I got from family members, from people watching this show. Don't quit your job. Health insurance, pension, retirement. So talk about those three a little bit. What kind of concerns, uh, what kind of plans do you have? Maybe you're already doing or into the future. I know you listen to Gary Vee, so it's got to have some yeah. kind of financial plan going on for here. health insurance i still don't have an answer for it my, my goal is not to get sick oh that's my goodness my all right <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for a cover to get a little cheaper because right now see now i gotta stop screen. you he's single see that's the answer of a single <laughs> exactly. man exactly see i'm not single i you know you yeah. can't do this ladies he's single y'all yeah. just yeah. contact me i'll, yeah, I'll just check right. out his channel right there <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> I mean, blush, Kevin. <laughs> all right so you just, all right, keep so going. That. For the retirement, mm -hmm. I try to put in at least a couple hundred bucks every week into okay. either a Roth IRA. Awesome. I also play in the stock market. Awesome. And not financial advice, but I also play in crypto. So, <laughs> okay. I, I don't know if people are going to hate that or not. Right. No, they're not. I mean, that's, hey, that's he's my 31, right? <laughs> I, I, I do Roth. So Roth is the safest plan, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. And, well, it just depends on what it's in yeah. in a Roth, but I hear you. And the stock is the mm -hmm. little... 
more volatile mm -hmm. than crypto because you're you're you're, you're playing the market i mean you're you're doing day trading of some um, sort in no, that part for no stock market i just just put in like like the big companies okay like all right well Apple you ought to do that in your roth but we're not talking about okay. investments right here <laughs> i'm not giving any advice <laughs> all right so that those are some 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 good things and those are the concerns out there that a lot of people have so last but not least where do you see yourself as far well i'll tell you what let's talk numbers really quick Mm -hmm. Will you give a people? Will you give the people an idea? Can you give us? I don't. I don't like to talk details about what I'm doing either. But can you give us maybe a 90 day gross total? If you not just eBay, but all the platforms, including I know it's a little hard, including furniture, the whole nine yards, oh, furniture, all yeah. of it, just wow. a, a gross total. And just keep in mind, he's got some overhead, right? Yeah. I don't have overhead in this shed, right? Yeah. Well, I got the electric bill and the cat food, but that's about it. Okay. If you include furniture. I probably said my nine days, 55, 60. Okay. Under. Okay. That gives me a really good idea because I know the margins that most of these things work on. So that should give you a pretty good idea of what you're doing. How can you scale? Um, do you want to scale? Do you see employees in the future? What do you see five years from now? Definitely. If I, if you want to scale, you got to get employees. Mm -hmm. If I, I could survive right now on what I do, but I also don't want to list the whole time. And all mm -hmm. that. So I'm actually on my fourth employee right now. Really? The first two employees that gets I trained really well because they quit and they became full-time. You need to have well. kids like me. <laughs> that's that's what I'm missing. <laughs> my dog can't list apparently. But uh, <laughs> so my first two employees quit and started their own full-time business. So I guess I, I guess I trained them way too well. Uh, so. I've heard people, <laughs> I, I think Pete Craigslist Hunter said that. Yeah. There's been a few other people, right? It's the same thing. It's like, I mean, the light bulb goes off and it's like, why would yeah, I do this for exactly. somebody else? He's like, why, why, why would I do this for $20 yeah. an hour awesome. if I could sell this? And what's, I respect it. So yeah, I, I absolutely. It. But you yeah. can find the right people. Yeah. So you just never I just got to find a guy, somebody that's confident mm -hmm. and, and wants to just be have a safe job, I guess. <laughs> then my last guy that I had, he went to full-time college, but hopefully he comes back and does it. So mm -hmm. I just need someone just to do like just the general tasks, taking some pictures, mm -hmm. cleaning some things. Yeah eventually start listing mm -hmm. but if i get enough of those employees the buying stuff is easy everyone knows the buying <laughs> stuff is easy I can so i tell people all the time, all the time sourcing yeah. is never a problem yeah. it's just other stuff is hard. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. awesome well hey thank you so much is there anything you want to say or plug or anything before you head on out of here I feel like you plugged me enough right? <laughs> awesome man. don't forget hey. that i'm single right that's right that's absolutely <laughs> right ladies right there go check his channel out i'm sure he's got an email over there okay <laughs> paul thanks so much i'm gonna get turner down here to give you a gift okay appreciate it all right turner you're gonna give him a few of the merch because reagan's not here today so turner picked out a couple things for you got an in a mug why don't you hand him that shirt right there okay Thank you. You're welcome. You sure it's not your size? I don't think he has one his size. I'm not sure. We have to convince you. Definitely. And we'll get you whatever else you want. Paul, thanks for thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. All right.